Good morning, guys. We're getting ready to head out here on another one of these slow pitch jigging trips on our beautiful Flying Hub 2. We're heading quite a ways offshore, anywhere from 60, 80 miles today. We are still in the middle of that deep water closure. A lot of people think, hey, you can't keep red grouper past 20 fathoms. It's not worth going out there. Today, hopefully, we're going to show you that that's not true. Go catch some nice, big, fat red grouper, maybe a few scamps, and hopefully a bunch of the mangrove snapper. Potentially have an option for some of those pelagics today, too. There's been a lot of kingfish around, a few blackfin tuna. So we're going out there to capitalize on this beautiful little weather window and take advantage of uh, that good weather while it's here. This time of year, early spring, and even in the fall and through the winter, you have to watch the weather so closely. And we do try our best through our website, through our daily live videos, through our fishing uh, reports that we do every week, and through our weather links page on our website to kind of help guests pick that best weather window. And uh, we try to point them in the right direction. So today, we've been saying for a week now, Tuesday's the day to fish. If, if you're gonna call out of work, today's the day to do it because all the variables are lining up. So often people get hung up, well, what's the best moon phase to fish? There's a lot more variables that go into this than just moon phase. Today we've got a falling barometer. We're right ahead of some bad weather. We've got a good moon phase. We're coming up on a new moon, which typically makes the daytime bite real good. So there's a lot of things lining up that are, should make today a really great day of fishing. Now, let's go out there and see what happens. slow pitch jigs so it's a unique kind of fishing and it really has a lot to do with the jig but also the rod the rod uh, these slow pitch jigging rods put a recoil on the jig and gives it the ability to kind of get the action you're looking for and what's unique about this style of fishing like any artificial lures is you're kind of trying different tactics or working the lure in different ways through the day and uh, trying to find out what the fish want at that certain spot or that certain time of day. So it can be a little bit tricky, but it's also fun because you're trying different size jigs, different weights, different techniques. Like right now, I'm bouncing right along the bottom in very short pools, but you can also switch it up and do a longer fall. And uh, you can also put in a quarter crank and kind of get a little higher off the bottom and work up in the water column. So there's a lot of different methods that you can use while you're working these jigs, but you're just trying to find what they like and then replicate that as best you can, if you can remember what you just did <laughs> to get them to bite. But just trying different depths is the biggest thing I've noticed that a lot of times they, they want it right on the bottom or they want it two quarter cranks up or sometimes you just, uh, have to keep mixing it up and trying different things. And a lot of times you can work a jig for a while and if you're catching fish with it, great. But then in a little bit, maybe time of, chain, time of day changed or current changed and all of a sudden you're not getting bit on that jig anymore. And you can change up colors, change up styles. And sometimes that's all you need to hook up. So just trying different things, constantly working and uh, hook up. Nice red grouper, that's a keeper. That's a keeper. Nice one. Nice stick. Good job, Jamie. Mango, baby. Jig Pro wavy. Yeah, I got, I got the Oh yeah. 
He just spit up a big old eel. We were bait fishing, that'd be going on my head. So after all that time, This is a Jig Pro Wavy. It's 150 grams silver and glow. Letting it charge up a little bit before I send it down. It's been working real well for me. Last trip I was out here, I had um, the silver, or uh, excuse me, the blue and glow version and caught a huge, huge fish. Absolutely destroyed it. Couldn't even turn him around. It was a big fish, really learned a hard lesson that was my first ever slow pitch jigging trip and uh <laughs> got taken to school in a hurry on that jig so i picked up a few more of them and it's been good to me today i've uh started out with it and it worked really well and then went away from it when things slowed down tried a few other jigs uh caught a few fish but it was a lot slower so i went back to this one and it's been producing again so hey you find something that you're confident in that's working for you just stick to it <laughs> That's been my method so far. Oh, mango. Nope, no, it's a scamp. It's a scamp? He yeah, may make it. You may make it. Oh yeah. Stretch him out, dog. I, I ain't letting you measure. Richie, you're back. <laughs> Richie, put your glasses, take your glasses off and measure them. That's a good sign to see that scamp come up. Very good eating fish. Right. Hopefully it's a sign that they're gonna fire off. We're on a good bottom, and we got a great show. So let's see what happens from here. Guys, watch your lines. We got a big fish coming up in the boat. Probably gonna be your lines, guys. You gotta get it up over the engine. Up over the engine. Well, he's under it. You gotta get it. He's under the engine. Right now for a sec? Yep. Loosen my grab. Yep. It's twisted. Which way is he twisted? I'm not sure. Get me inside here. You take the F out of his way. Yeah, we got this. Watch yourself. Yeah. Keep him out. Keep him out. Keep him out. You guys got to reel up watch. if you're on this side. Nice. Nice bang. Woo! Yeah. Woo! There we go. Nice fish. All right. That's beautiful, dude. Thank you, sir. That is beautiful. You want to get through there? Or you? And you didn't get sharked. Nah, exactly. That's that's awesome, man. Great job. All right. Again, we're up in the middle grounds, lower middle grounds, the clover leaf. Um, next jigging trip, we'll be out back out in that 220 foot. Um, it'll open up a lot more. And uh, but we did have a beautiful day out here. We had Dylan out here. He got some nice fish. We did get some nice fish. It just uh, it was slow picking, and uh, we did lose some current now and then. So. Chris over here got some nice fish, got a scam, 
got red grouper, mangoes. So overall, it it it, it just didn't fire off like we wanted it to. But that's fishing, and I believe uh, sometime in April we have our next one, and uh, hopefully we get guys out here, and the guys that did come out uh, should not be discouraged. That you know, again, if you're new to this, or if you just it's going to be your first time out here, there is going to be a learning curve. But we got such a good clientele, everyone's open to teach the next guy and you know, what we do out here. So. So we got about 15, 10 minutes left, 15 minutes left, and then we got a long trip back, about 75 miles out, and hopefully we had beautiful weather, and hopefully we get out soon. So I guess we'll see you all next time.